minus 35 last night. Truck says minus 38, but I'm not going to argue with either of them. Oh, that's a cold one. You get a little bit more snow as you can see. So we are feeling quite content up here. Been watching my winter shed and the temperature hasn't really budged off three and a half. So that is real good news. They, I expect to find the fan on idle here. And I don't want to poke into the shed too much during this cold, cold weather. This is a time that we kind of want them to be completely undisturbed so they can set themselves into, you know, their winter state and get through this prolonged period of time. But I can't help myself. I'm just going to go inside and take a peek. Um, what I want to do, because of the low air flows, I'm kind of curious on what the CO2 levels are within the shed now. And uh, it's not like I'm going to do anything about it, but I just want to see because of the air, low air flow, uh, if the CO2 will ramp up closer to that two, three, four thousand parts per million. With a higher air flow, it was uh, around that 1600. So the outside, I think, is about 600 or so. There she's at idle. Let's go take a peek. Module reads four. And it is 3.5 consistent from the outside to the inside of the shed. So the air is being mixed perfectly. I don't want to disturb them too much here. I'll just walk down the aisle. What I want to do though is Check this. That calibrate. Ooh, you can feel the cold air here. So we do have inflow of air. Look at the uh, frost. What are you saying to me? 3,000, eh? Just going to the center of the room to see what you read. bit of drop. Thirty one forty nine. Forty percent humidity at four degrees Celsius. Right in the center. That's pretty good. Not too dry. Not too warm. CO2 is, it is what it is. Down here. A little bit of V drop. This row is a little quieter. About five degrees here. I think my hand's warming. The thingy up. 3261. My disturbance is becoming noticeable by the bees. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Must be my breath. Blowing hot air. So if we just blow them a little bit. Them all worked up.
That's good. This shed is sitting pretty. Holy shnikes, it's cold out there. We have two chore tractors in the shop here to try to keep them warm overnight to make our start a little bit easier tomorrow morning. Doesn't leave much room because we have this maintenance project on the go. It takes up a lot of space, but you know, like Adam told me, we should have made it another 20 feet bigger that way but we held him back on budget. So he said, what do you expect? Nice to have a heated shop anyways. Two tractors, easy start. Another two tractors plugged in outside. So tomorrow morning's job. So what I need to do is ask a little bit of advice from my YouTube viewership. Yeah, I'm not a professional at this. I'm, you know, just a, a monkey wrench really is all I am. This is an old 1949 Chrysler straight six. And this engine has seen a lot of life. So I'm attempting to restore it or get it back in working condition so we can run this in either canola or soybeans next year. So we have a lot of cleanup work to do on it, but it has seen many hours. And the reason why we've pulled it apart is because there's a lot of blow by. And it just had no horsepower. I could hardly run this machine because well, it's probably one of the reasons why this combine was parked is because the engine was worn out. Time for an upgrade, right? So, what I need to do is recondition it. And I have a motor guy I know, and I'll be taking the block to him. But I need just a little bit of advice. I don't want to spend a lot of money on this. What we'll be doing is looks like the uh, the valves are seated all right but we'll probably grind the valves that's easy enough this is what i need advice on it has a lot of blow by and i'm expecting i'm assuming this is the reason why it is just worn out and the advice I was given is we can, you know, bore this out a little bit bigger, put a bigger cylinder in here, or piston, I mean, tighten it up. But what do you guys think? Would I be able to, like, there's a lot of slap there. I'm going to be running this thing maybe three hours a year. I don't want to dump a lot of money into it. Would I be able to tighten that up just with rings to eliminate the blow-by? to increase the compression, to increase the horsepower, to be able to combine about an hour or two of canola. Like every, every cylinder is like that. The worst one is number one, I think. Look at the carbon there, eh? That's quite a lot of piston slap. But the main reason for this project is to just to teach, oh, this one's pretty bad too. See, that's, is that too much? Can I tighten that up with rings? Like if I put better rings in there, I'll be able to get away with uh, increased the compression. YouTube world, what say you? I don't want to spend, like I say, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this because, well, like I say, it's only going to run an hour or two every year if I can find time to do it. My main objective is just to get my boys into something mechanical like this so they under, like they didn't even understand how engines work. And now they're asking, can we go back and work on this engine? Can we, can we work at this at the shop? We'll be coming back here tomorrow 
and we're going to strip the rest of it down. We'll take the uh, the pan off. We'll take the pistons out. You know, we'll take everything off, the bell housing and all that. We'll make sure we mark everything appropriately. But learning, you know, spend a couple thousand dollars pretty easy. I just want to make sure that, man. Well, I'll read the comments. What do you guys think? <laughs>